In this video, I'm going to answer the question, can you tell if fertilization has occurred, but implantation has failed? So in this video, you will find out. Hi everyone, my name is Susan and this is The Awesomes. Thank you so much for joining me today. So this question has come up and even though the answer is not very exciting, I thought that it was worth answering this question. So again, the question is, is it possible to tell if your egg has been fertilized but then implantation has failed? And the short answer really is no, you can't tell but maybe you can, but let's kind of get into everything here. So first of all, obviously, if you are going through some sort of fertility treatments, if you're getting like an embryo transfer, then obviously that embryo, that egg has already been fertilized. So in that case, then yes, you can tell, obviously, if a fertilized egg has, is being put into your uterus, then obviously it is already fertilized and so then you can tell if the pregnancy doesn't go through then obviously fertilization has occurred but implantation has not occurred. So we're not talking about fertility treatments, um, we're instead talking about just sort of natural pregnancy I suppose. So the question itself is can you tell or how can you tell um, if fertilization has occurred and this indicates that there have to be some sort of symptoms present in order for you to actually be aware that fertilization has occurred but implantation has not occurred. So as women, our bodies are going through changes constantly, it seems like. And it really, it seems like it, but we really are. So throughout every single menstrual cycle that we have, there is this continual up and down of different hormones um, different hormones triggering other hormones to go off and all of this stuff that's happening. So really we are going through changes constantly. So it can feel like there's a symptom for everything. So there are PMS symptoms before you get your period. There are symptoms when you're getting close to ovulation. There are symptoms when you do ovulate. There's symptoms when an a, a fertilized egg implants. Um, and then the cycle just goes on and on. But what about fertilization? Is there, are there any symptoms when it comes to fertilization? And really the answer is no. Um, and this is because most of our symptoms, pretty much all of our symptoms that are happening are due to hormones changing. Um, symptoms for anything reproductive based I'm talking about. It's all because of our hormones changing. But at the point that fertilization is occurring, there are no hormonal changes happening that would be any different to any other cycle that you're going through. Okay, so this might not be completely true because the embryo is sending off signals when it's ready for implantation. It will send off these protein sort of signals to your uterine lining. Um, it's even said that the embryo as it's developing is releasing prostaglandins. So I suppose there is there is some hormonal things going on during this time of from fertilization to before implantation, but there's, it's really not anything that you are really going to be able to feel as a symptom inside of your body. At this point in time, the fertilized egg, which then divides and becomes an embryo, which then divides and divides some more, these cells are dividing and becomes a blastocyst. During this time, this embryo is sort of on its own. It's, it kind of has to sort of figure this all out by itself. Our actual bodies, at this point are not really doing anything for that fertilized egg. So it's not until implantation of this blastocyst, of the fertilized egg, it's not until implantation actually occurs that our bodies start to possibly be feeling symptoms. Our bodies sort of get back in on the, on the whole process of creating this baby. But up until that point, our bodies are basically doing the same thing that it would be doing whether we were pregnant or not pregnant. It doesn't matter what cycle it is, our bodies are doing the same thing. So after implantation does occur, then at that point um, our bodies start producing a hormone known as HC HCG. And H HCG, I'm not sure why that's so hard for me to say right now, HCG um, will then in turn um, 
encourage your body to start producing more progesterone and estrogen. And then that increase of progesterone and estrogen is um, what is gonna cause all of these early pregnancy symptoms. But if that egg does not get implanted, if that fertilized egg is not implanted for whatever reason, then basically your body's just going to go through the normal menstrual cycle that it always goes through and you will just get your period when you usually get your period. So now we're gonna get into the but of the answer because I said there was, there is a possibility that there could be a but. So the question again is, can you tell if fertilization has occurred but implantation has not occurred? Um, so the rest of what I'm gonna be saying in this video I have not found any evidence to prove this and this is just totally my theory based on what happened to me in my last cycle. So take this with a grain of salt, but you, it might be worth listening to. And maybe this has happened to you too. So my usual menstrual cycle is 25 days or maybe 26 days in length. All the time, ever since I got my first period when I was 12 years old, that's just how it's always been. But the, there are times when it has been a little bit longer, but not very often. It's, that has only actually happened um, during the times when I've been trying to conceive. And in those cases, when it was a little bit longer, I kind of am just assuming that those were sort of chemical pregnancies. And so that's why it took you know, a few days longer for me to actually get my period. And this has only happened like maybe two or three times to me. And keep in mind, I am 34 years old. So this is like 22 years of experience of getting my period. So now what happened? So if we're talking about those instances with a chemical pregnancy, um, that would mean that it actually did implant for a little while and then, and then it didn't work out. So I basically got my period a couple days later. But what happened last cycle is that my usual 25, 26 day menstrual cycle ended up being 23 days in length. So for me, that's quite a bit shorter. I know that if I was to talk to my doctor, they'd probably be like, oh, whatever, periods change all the time. But I'm telling you from my own personal experience, like my periods just don't change. It's always 25 or 26 days in length. So also what was happening last cycle is that me and my husband are, are trying to conceive. So we were trying to conceive last cycle as well. Um, and so we did end up making love about five days in a row, right when my uh, ovulation window should have been. Um, so I guess there's a good chance that the egg could have been fertilized because we were making love enough times that the sperm should have gotten to the egg. But as I said, there is no real way to know if the egg has been fertilized. But, so my theory is that the egg could have been fertilized and it could have been a genetically abnormal um, embryo. And then in that case, it could have triggered a stress response in my uterine lining to cause me to get my period earlier than normal. So this first part of what I've just said is something that is scientifically proven, but the last part, the stress response triggering a, a period, this is something that I've been trying to search for, but I haven't found any indication that the stress response actually triggers um, a period to occur. But the first half is actually something that does happen. So I want to just like talk to you about that a little bit so you get more of an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so if an egg is fertilized, um, just because it's fertilized doesn't mean that it is going to be genetically perfect and it doesn't mean that the cells are gonna divide perfectly. So as the cells are dividing, um, let's say that the cells are dividing abnormally or the genetics are of, the, of this embryo that's developing are somehow just not quite working out right. It's the genes aren't turning on and off at the, right, in the right way and therefore it's just genetically abnormal. So this, um, this fertilized egg can continue to grow, to turn into an embryo, to turn into a blastocyst. Um, but then when this clump of abnormal cells that is now a blastocyst, an abnormal blastocyst, when it gets to your uterus, because it's starting out in your fallopian tube and making its way down into your uterus, 
when it gets to your uterus, it will send out a signal. And this signal is sent out from a blastocyst, whether it's normal or abnormal. Um, so it's sending out the signal to your endometrium. And the endometrium at this point has to be receptive to the signal. If it's not receptive to the signal, you'll get your period as usual. But if it is receptive to the signal and the blastocyst is perfectly healthy, this is when um, the endometrium will prepare itself for receiving the blastocyst. So that is like a healthy sort of pregnancy scenario. Um, but if it's receptive to the signal and then the blastocyst is sending out an abnormal signal, so indicating to the uterine lining that this blastocyst is abnormal, then instead of the uterus, instead of the uterine lining, the endometrium um, wanting to receive this blastocyst, what instead will happen is that it will cause a stress response in your endometrium. So this is sort of where my knowledge of this whole situation, this whole scenario sort of ends. Um, so what I have found is that the stress response that they're talking about is a heat shock stress response. So this is the same sort of stress response that your body will have to cancer cells. So where I'm kind of getting lost here is my question is then, could this stress response be sort of, um, let's say like irritating your uterine lining enough to induce a your menstrual cycle to come. So to induce a period, could that be what's happening? Or is this heat shock stress response, is it something completely different and it's not gonna have anything to do with your period? So in my sort of theory, because I don't understand yet what this heat shock stress response actually does to the cells of anything, um, my theory could be that it creates it induces menstruation. So if this is something that you know a lot about and you can sort of debunk this in the comments, please do because I would love to learn more. I'm honestly, like I'm here to learn. I don't care what you guys put down there as long as it's like, I don't know, something that I can actually learn from, I really appreciate it. So because my specific situation is pretty anecdotal, I think it's worth just kind of giving you an overview of my entire cycle. Um, just so you can kind of see that like, I haven't really changed anything and I don't feel like there, there's anything that I have done differently that should be um, changing the length of my cycle. So usually when it comes to cycles and if they are irregular, if they're longer or shorter or whatever, it's usually mainly because of the follicular phase. So the follicular phase is let's say the, half, the first half-ish of your menstrual cycle and the luteal phase is the last portion of your cycle. So the luteal phase is usually always the same number of days all the time. So that I think it's like 12 to 16 days in length. Um, and then the follicular phase can vary a lot. So the follicular phase, um, if it is being affected, if it's changing all the time or even changing once or twice or whatever, it's usually affected by things like stress or changes in your lifestyle or anything like that. The luteal phase can be affected as well, um, but it's usually just due to like very strenuous exercise and restricted calorie intake. So this is like very, very strenuous. It's not just a little bit of exercise. It's like if you're training for the military or you're training to be an Olympic whatever, or a bodybuilder or something like that, where you're putting your body through a lot of stress and you're you know, rapidly losing weight or whatever. So that is definitely not the case for me. Um, I haven't really changed anything in my diet, haven't really changed anything at all. Um, as far as I can tell, I've been doing the exact same thing that I'm always doing. So yeah, so there's, I really feel like there's no reason why my period could have been shorter, except maybe that I'm getting a little bit older now. So maybe going forward, I can just see if my periods are just becoming more and more irregular now, but to be honest, I don't know. Like I'm 34, so I'm not that old, but as I'm sure all of the doctors out there are going to say, and I'm sure my own doctors will say, 
is that periods can change all the time. The length of your period can change all the time and it's not really a big deal. Okay guys, so that's all I have to say in this video. Um, yeah, definitely put comments down below. I love to hear all of your questions and I love to hear all of the tips that you guys give. Um, I love being proved wrong as well. Like it's fun for me to learn, like I said. So any comments you have, definitely put them down below and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Thank you, bye.